As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Today, I am Angela Madden with Sydney Goldman. Jay is away for the Walk for Life, but I am so honored, Sydney, to have you today co-hosting. Oh, yeah, and it's such a joy to be on Inscripted Faith. And, you know, as many of you know that I am now the host of the Glory Hour, and I'm really excited because you're going to see a snippet of that coming up later on in the program because there's an event coming up, Gathering Christians Together for such a time as this in this area in Pennsylvania. So we're going to show you a little clip of that and what you can expect. I am so excited, Sydney. As we head over to the set, I get excited to sit with you. First of all, doing the Glory Hour has been such an amazing program. I love watching it with you. And, and the, the, the interviews you have are so full of insight and powerful. And I can't wait to hear more about this revival event. Girl, the, I know that's your heart. Yeah, no, thank you so much. You know, I think, in, you know, the Glory Hour is about where spirit meets culture and having culturally relevant conversations from a spiritual perspective. Because now in the season, in this hour, Angela, and as all of you know as well, that there's so much conflict, there's so much tension yes. in our nation, in our world, but we need to have a heavenly perspective. We yes. need to have the mind of Christ so that we can move forward in his power and his victory so the kingdom can come. Come on, come <laughs> on girl, that's exactly right. Today's program is gonna be so powerful because that's exactly what we're gonna focus on, our mindset, our perspective. Every problem in life starts with a thought and sometimes negative thoughts can flood our minds and hold us back. Christian mindset author and speaker Mamika Cooney believes it doesn't have to be that way. She joins us now to share how we can change our lives by changing our minds. Mamika, we are so glad to have you on Unscripted Faith. Well, thanks for having me. This is fabulous. I'm so excited. Love this topic, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and we love your accent. I mean, girl, we cannot get over the South African accent. It is beautiful. <laughs> so we'll love. We'll just love listening to you talk to us today. <laughs> well, oh, hold on. I don't have an accent. You do. You guys have an American accent. I'm the normal one here, right? <laughs> have an accent too because it's an American accent but your accent is lovely we can listen to it all day. <laughs> oh, thank you I appreciate it <laughs> yes so Mamika we gather a little bit from your story that you actually experienced a lot of traumatic events growing up and lived in a state of fear could you share with us specifically some of those traumatic events you experienced yeah sure well I was born and raised in South Africa did the high school got married had my first child um, and my husband and I immigrated uh, around about 2000. But um, you know, my, everybody has a story. And my story is, is not different, but it's unique to me. Um, and I'm sure all of our listeners can, can really feel the same way, right? We all go through things and the Lord puts us through experiences. We don't know at the time can shape us for the future. At the time, as a child, when you're going through things like, you know, parental divorce, um, you know, intense fear, anxiety, bullying, um, fear, loss, we all go through these experiences. And what I had found is I didn't realize until I was in my 20s that my mind was a mess. Like I always thought the way that I think would just be normal. And I just allowed myself to sort of fall through life. But it was only after some um, losing uh, my mother-in-law to cancer. And, you know, when you have a, a woman of faith who, who's praying for others' healing and she doesn't, and she, she dies. It's like, Lord, where are you? You know, we all have those moments of questioning our faith. Um, and I went through, you know, some uh, uh, issues with our family members. And I'd realized that there was something that kept repeating itself. And I couldn't figure out what it was until I started reading more and spending more time with the Lord. And he said, you, your mind is a mess. The way you think is not how I've destined you to think. Because having a mind of Christ means that we have that authority in Christ and we know how to exercise our authority. And we don't allow the traumas and the fears and the experience and the ne negative experiences to keep us in victimhood. So it was, it was a very painful but necessary process of learning how to renew my mind through you know, prayer as well. And then I just dove straight into understanding the brain how the mind works. And it's amazing. Let me tell you, science is finally catching up with the Bible when the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Like, yeah. hello, duh. Exactly. Well, that's like really good news is, you know, with the Bible connecting to what is going on with the psychology in our minds. But Mamika, I want to just ask you something because you said something that I think a lot of people can, you know, resonate with. You said, my mind was a mess. So mm -hmm. from the scientific perspective, what things can we say, okay, this is when my mind is in a trauma pattern. This is when my mind is just kind of out of control and it's it's not operating in the way that God is calling it to function and process. 
definitely. Well, I like to call her the drama queen. Okay, something happens and almost all of a sudden she's on the drama train to, to Dramaville and she's like, oh my gosh, the worst case scenario. What if that happens? And <gasps> panic, you know. Um, and I didn't realize that it was a habitual way of thinking and processing things. So instead of thinking, stopping and saying, okay, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? <clears throat> and also I think, you know, in the Christian circles, we don't talk a lot about the integration between our mind, our spirit and our bodies. Like anxiety, if you think, <clears throat> excuse me, anxiety shows itself, like if you're nervous, butterflies in your stomach, or anxiety could show up as tension in your shoulders, or migraines. Like I was constantly having migraines. Mm -hmm. And it's like God gave us our body as a, as a way to live this earth, but as well as we don't listen. We think it's more something out there. But until we start to realize that God has given us the body and, and our minds and our spirits to be integrated and if we constantly allowing the fears, the rejections, the the whatever you deal with every day to immediately take a negative slant and think of the worst case scenario, you're in Dramaville before you know it. So there's a bit of training that's involved in learning to take your mind and your thoughts captive. Now, what does that mean? You know, being captive means, you know, take the lasso and grab hold of it and don't allow it to get away. And that was part of me realizing this processing, I had to change. Like the way that I would function, another big big sign um, that your mental state is a mess is your mouth. Our mouth processes, you know, as the, the heart is, we speak it out, right? So if our mind and our heart are constantly thinking of the negative or we have a sense of unworthiness or we, we always working and looking through things through fear, the way we speak is important because your brain and your ears hear what you say. And I know us women especially are not so great about talking good about ourselves. So I really think about us learning to censor our speech, censor our thoughts. And here's a good tip. I love journaling. Good old-fashioned pen and paper will help to engage that part of your brain. I mean, it's all great to type, but there's something special when you take out that pen and paper and you start to write down your thoughts. Even if you sound like a petulant child, it's fine. God can take it. He's, he, he's seen this all before. But that's another way of just processing and slowing down. And there's something that I talk about in my book, which I think is very important, is we need to slow down to speed up. And what I mean by that is if your car is going under 100 miles an hour down the highway and you've got your foot on the pedal to the middle and you just, you're just ignoring the out of gas signs or the, the, the engine lights are about to blow, there's only one option is that you're going to break down and fall apart. But if we can say, well, let's just take a foot off the gas maybe some boundaries, maybe some self-care. Maybe we need to just take some time out and reassess how we're thinking and allow God to start to fill in the things we need to. So those are just a few of the tips that I'd realized through my own journey. So Mamika, I love those physical examples of kind of what you're, those cues, right? That, that maybe I'm in a mess, I'm in a pattern here that I need to get out of. But what were some of those more subtle thoughts that came in that perhaps someone who's watching today can say, oh wait, I have that thought. And what is it exactly they can do once they have that thought to kind of begin to reverse the mindset around it? Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of our mindset patterns are established in the first 10 years of life. So childhood does in sort of teach us the patterns of thinking. And a lot of it is based on models behavior. Like if mom and dad behaved a certain way, we learn to process our thought patterns on that. So for example, unworthiness is a huge thing. And that often stems from rejection. Like I had some very, you know, traumatic issues with being physically bullied as a child. So you think you automatically think no one wants to be your friend. So as you grow up, the adult version of that is like, oh, I'm going to just isolate myself. Oh, they won't want to speak to me. They won't want to invite me to this opportunity. Oh, I may as well not even a try. Oh, I'm too old for that. Oh, I'm too young for that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not enough of insert whatever. And that's a programming that's just become a habit because our brains are trying to protect us. If you think about it, your brain is like, you know, back in the day, we'd have to run away from, from hungry lines for our own safety. <laughs> oh my gosh, my gosh, freak out, engage your adrenaline and start running, whether it's fear, um, flight, or, or fawn, or freeze. That is our brain's way of keeping us safe. So any time we're triggered, and triggered could be having an argument with the husband, or dealing with a teenager who's real stroppy, all of those things can trigger this subconscious way of dealing with things that start a fear response. So part of it is understanding and asking yourself, why? Why do I think like this? Why do I react like this? And it's, it takes a little bit of a practice, but the journaling will really help because then you can become more objective. 
about how you react and, 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 and so, as opposed to how you should respond. Well, I love that so much is just talking about with our brains and how it's really there to protect us mm -hmm. and to heal us. And so, you know, Mimika, we have a little bit of time left. And so what would you say, you know, for that person watching right now that how they need to even retrain and unstick their mind to focus mm -hmm. on the Holy Spirit? How important is that in our daily walks to rewire ourselves? Definitely. And I think that's an excellent point is how do we retrain our mind to think and listen and to the cues of the Holy Spirit as opposed to whether it's the enemy or, you know, the news or our own negative thinking, really what it comes down to is understanding what you're thinking and making sure that you can take that thought captive. Like if a negative thought comes, you're like, you know what, what does the Lord say about this? What is the Holy Spirit saying about me? Mm -hmm. And another great thing, of course, we all know is to go to God's word. What does he say about me? He says, I'm loved. He says, I'm worthy. So I ain't going to believe those negative, those negative Nancy's anymore. That's the way we start to rewire our brain. Um, and start to uh, really walk out faith with a strong mindset. Thank you so much, Mamika. We loved having you here. Thank you for teaching us some tips and tricks to reset and re, um, recenter our mind on Christ. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. As kids have recently begun the new school year, it can be a very stressful time for parents. On this week's Ask Amy, Amy offers some biblical advice to give parents some ease. Let's check it out. Welcome to This Time with Ask Amy. It is that time of year. Some moms are happy about it. Some moms are sad about it. Some moms are worried about it. One thing is for sure, we're all hurried about it, hurrying, getting the school supply, getting... And what about all of the homework the mothers have to do in the world? Can we just say, moms, you are heroes? And that is the question of the day. My kids are going back to school. What does the Bible have to say as I send them off all day? I have got three thoughts for you and three scriptures. Let's go. Number one, we're going to expect the best this year. We're gonna expect that they're in the right class with the right teacher at the right time and they're gonna have the right friends. We're gonna expect this is gonna be the greatest year of their school life. Number two, we're gonna speak life over our children. We're gonna say, you are smart, you've got this, you're gonna do great in school, you are so smart and brilliant. And number three, Let's remember that they are not just our kids, that they are actually his kids, and he is actually watching over every detail of their life. Three scriptures for you, Isaiah 54, 13. All of our children will be taught of the Lord and great will be their peace. That's right, they are taught of the Lord, not just the teacher, not just you, but they're taught of the Lord. Number two, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Make sure you speak life over your kids this school year. Deuteronomy 31, 8, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake your children. So do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. As my kids went off to school every morning, I spoke these words over them. I said, children, you are sharp, smart, quick, and good looking. You have the mind of Christ. You have favor with God and man and angels are all around you and everything your hand touches will prosper. And of course they're yeah, yeah, yeah. But they still remember that confession over them today. And I also said this as we end, I said, you know what? Every time you get up in the morning, the earth shakes, the heavens open, and the devil pees his pants because a son and a daughter of God are awake. So we say to you today, kids, go change the world. Speaking life over our children creates life. You know, Sid, when I think about that, and I love Amy's comments and advice and encouragement to parents, because when I think about that, I think about how much scripture talks about us declaring yeah. a thing to see it established, speaking life, that we would see life coming to us. And I know, I know for you, girl, you live that 
You yeah. live and move <laughs> in you. that. Yes. Thank you. I think it is so important, especially in this season, in this hour, that we have yes. to know there's life, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes. So some of the, you know, environments, some of the atmospheres that we're living is, is because of our confessions. But, you know, yes. one thing that is on my heart, and I just think as we're seeing so much contention in our culture, and even yes. with this political season that's coming up, it is so important for us to have the mind of Christ and understand that there's unity and there's power when we dwell together in unity, coming yes. together as one. We are the body of Christ. There's yes. He is in us, so there's all power and authority right there. We need to own that. Yeah, That's own exactly that. <laughs> right. And honestly, even when you're saying that, I think about scripture, it says faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. hearing by the word of God. So if we want to have faith, if we want to be full of life, we must have the word. And when we're centered on Christ and the word, girl, right. power comes. Power <laughs> does, power does come. And you know, speaking of power coming, I'm like really excited and we want to do a personal invitation to you that there is a gathering happening in Sarver, Pennsylvania. It's an American revival at Kelly Farms. And it's all about all of us gathering together as the body of Christ, coming together as one. And I want you to take a look at this segment from the Glory Hour. We had a chance to talk to the leaders and the organizers of this movement. Take a look. On this episode of the Glory Hour, the move of God that's set to take place on this farm in Butler County, Pennsylvania in September 2024. I had a chance to talk to the organizers and the leaders who are calling forth for a revival, a revival, an American revival on Kelly Farm so people can know the heart of Jesus, so people can come and experience his tangible love. And especially in times like these with so much chaos and unrest happening in our nation, even leading up to the election, they say for such a time as this, it is crucial it is necessary and it is needed for all of us to come together in unity as family under Jesus. I'm here with Jeff Hartung. He's the visionary of American Revival here at Kelly Farm. Jeff, I'm so glad to have you on the Glory Hour to share about the story behind this great move that's going to be happening soon. Thank you, Sydney. It's great to be here this morning with you and I look forward to this conversation. So Jeff, take us to the beginning. How did God birth this in your heart, in your spirit, to bring people together to know Jesus like never before? Well, you know, it's, um, well, about a year ago, um, I was uh, at an event um, where they were uh, having for Back to Blue. And, um, you know, I could feel God really moving that there's something that needs to be done to help this country to um, come together and, uh, and bring people to, into his kingdom. So uh, at the event, um, there was this band playing called Risen to Save, and uh, great music, great people. And afterwards, uh, the organizer, who was David McGill, introduced me to uh, Marcy and Paul Leo and the rest of the group. And uh, I felt God just saying, hey, you need to share what's on your heart with, uh, with these guys. And uh, so um, I shared with what was on my heart. And uh, Marcy looked at me and says, Yes, you know, we're, we're in <laughs> and, uh, you know, you just never know how people are going to respond. So uh, through that, we continue to talk. And um, uh, I guess it was about a week later, a few days later, she contacted me and said she had met another couple who was PJ and Alan uh, Kelly from the Kelly farm here and um, shared it with them. And they said, well, we'd love to have a revival you know, at our farm. And uh, so lo and behold, uh, uh, a few weeks later, we make the trip to the Kelly farm and uh, a group of about 12 came that night and we sat right here on the patio and um, the organizer of Back to Blue, David McGill, came along and uh, we sat and we talked and you could really feel God's presence here. And uh, it was like saying, this is the place. And uh, so from that point forward, uh, we started to meet and start to plan. And um, within a year, here we are. And it's you know going to be a great day to see what God has planned. What is your hope and your heart? You know when people are going to be gathering here on this farm, as one. What is your heart? It's the recognition as they sit with each other, that they recognize that they are all one family, that they are they are united as one because we are entering in a political season of diversity. That you know the November election could rip this country apart. The one thing that we in this country have in common is Christianity, right? I mean, I realize that there are other faiths in the country, of course, but many of us are Christians. And unfortunately, the diversity is that many Christians are either far right or far left. And we'll vote that way, you know, and we'll fight to the death believing that that's right or wrong, you know, whatever. 
but when they sit here on this piece of ground, they're not going to be thinking, I don't want them to be thinking about right or left. I want them to be thinking about Jesus Christ and yeah. the fact that they are, they are children of the God Most High. They are kings and queens of God. And, and together we are brothers and sisters and nothing else matters. moments ago you heard from Marcy Leo and I just love what she was just saying Angela about the importance of us as coming together yes. as one so we just want to personally invite you to the revival that's happening on the American Farm at Kelly Farm you see there's information right there on your screen it's September 28th 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and it's on Rymer Road and Sarver PA and if you want more information and also how to you know hear more about the revival go to 1735 foundation.org and also sidewalk profits are going to be there there's a man named Joe Stanley that has a powerful testimony of how he came out of addiction and just an overdose story so uh, you can see the full length version of the glory hour episode going more into the heart behind of what's taking place because men are going to be honored there I'm just really excited Angela you know for this time and season that we're in our country that this is the hour that we can take a stand yes. and it's not a position for politics Come it's a on. position for the kingdom of God and Come saying on. that the government rests on his shoulders it's on Jesus's shoulders yes. that's what matters and yes. that we're family we are one in Christ. <laughs> yes. You know, Sydney, I think about what would happen if we would literally lay down those things that divide us and focus just on Jesus. And I believe at that revival event this Saturday, we're going to get to see that. We're yeah. going to get to see what happens when you lay down every agenda, every idol, every God, yeah. and say King Jesus alone. You know, Sydney, I think about a lot of times within this hour in particular, that the bride has kind of gotten lost and, yeah. and caught up in the culture instead of reshaping it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there are things that we can do as the body of Christ to really shape culture instead of having it shape us. Well, I think it's something we're well, going back to something Mamika said is just like, we got to shift our mindsets. Yeah. That's the biggest thing because when we have these like di these diversions in our mind, like we, I think even we have to understand as the church is that we birth things that take yes. place. Like yeah. I truly believe is what we're seeing in our country and what is happening. A lot of it's because of the lack of action that we have taken as the body of Christ and some of the conversations that we had and the mindsets that we have that do not line up with the Bible. Yeah. So I feel like in this hour, in this season, it's like, we have got to get back to the word. We yes. have to get back to Jesus and yes. we have to know that like there's no savior it doesn't matter who gets in office that's right it really doesn't matter that's right it really doesn't matter because there's things that God is going to allow to take place in this country unfortunately yes. we hear a lot of prophetic voices saying that in this hour in this season but I think it is a necessary and it is vital yes. that we know that we rest on Jesus, him and him, him alone. alone. That's it. That's it. You know, I do love that Mamika brought up that mindset thing because I think a lot of times we look at things globally and we'll say, oh, we just need peace and we just, if this person's in politics yeah. and it, but if we have a world of peace within us, then peace will come as an outflow of our life. And I feel like, Sid, literally every time I look around and have these conversations with believers, I'm like, honey, you sound like the sons of thunder. And what did Jesus respond to them? He said, what manner of spirit are you? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't even know. And flesh produces flesh, spirit produces spirit. Right. And that's the only place life is. So I think that, like you said, as the bride, if we take that simple step of getting our own mind set, just like Mamika said, getting our own mind set on the right perspective, an eternal perspective where the government's on his, his shoulder. shoulder and the peace continues to increase, forever okay right. if we live there then we'll see an outflow from our very own lives that will change every area that we influence and another thing angela i think though too is that you know in this season in this hour of repentance Yes. of looking inside of our own hearts. On, I think that's very hard. A lot of us, we can operate in pride. We think that we've yes. arrived and just like, so just the encouragement to you today is just check in your yes. own heart, check in your own spirit and lay it at the feet of Jesus. Yes. And just saying, and even asking God, how can I be a solution? God, what are you calling me to do in this hour and this season, in my family, in my community, no matter what it is, I think it really takes of getting in that posture and position of just saying, yes, God, because yes. he has called us for such a time as this. We are in America in this time and we yes. see the shakings, we see the rumblings we see what's going on in the news yes but we need to have that perspective of okay god what are you saying and yes. we know that we are called to be salt and light in the earth so Come let on. us be the light in the midst of the darkness and let us be the ones bringing the hope yes because that's our call come on and what is it unto 
the eternal. Where is the eternal purpose? Not just a temporal purpose, but right. the eternal purpose. Sid, have you ever had a moment, or maybe it was at an event yeah. like this, that you just really felt and experienced God that shaped your life and shaped those who were even in attendance with you? You know, there's been many different moments where I have just been in gatherings and just felt like the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit. Well, one that comes to mind that I'll just share quickly is I had an opportunity to go to Azusa now that was mm. in LA and just was like honoring and commemorating the Azusa revival. And we was at the LA Coliseum where the Olympics are gonna be held in 2028. Yes. But before that happened, there was glory breaking out. I mean, people were getting out of wheelchairs. Yes. Blind eyes were Come opening. It was young people, it was people of all different backgrounds and like colors. It didn't matter. We were one under Jesus. And for me, I think I was in my mid late twenties, and um, it, it just really solidified in my heart. I was like, "Wow, this is what it's about." There's power when we come together yes. and just under the name of Jesus to see life transform. What about you, Angela? Yeah. You know, I had a powerful moment. It was life transforming at the Brownsville revival mm -hmm. in Pensacola, Florida, when I was 17 years old and was actually under the power of the Lord and came up totally transformed. Everything in inside of me and about me had changed. Christ went from being part of my life mm -hmm. to being life itself. You know, so when you said Azusa Street, I was reminded of Seymour yeah, and the Azusa Seymour. Street yeah. Lever. You know, a born a slave, leading black men and women together collectively, one mind, one heart, and they saw one of the greatest outpourings ever. And that is my hope with this, this revival event on September 28th. I pray that we begin to see that Azusa Street outpouring where nobody sees anything else but the fire and the glory of yeah. God. Lives transform a nation under the power and shaking of his power and his righteousness. What is a hope that you would share with our audience today that you want to see happen as a result of the revival event? You know, I think even, I know this is a heart of the leaders too, is that beyond the revival event, I think we come to these gatherings and we get all stirred up. We have the fire of God, but it needs to be contagious. And I believe and believe in this season and hour, you know, a move of God can start right in your home. And all it takes is, is when you submit yourself under Jesus, when you take that time and lay yourself out, I think that's the hour that we're in is let it start in our homes. Let us begin to have an altar of fire in our homes and yes. seeking the Holy Spirit and being moved because I've had the glory break out of my house, my husband I had. So I, that's like my heart in this hour and this season for us. Yes, like it doesn't have to be a big event. It can be the event of you on your knees, right. in your bedroom, right. seeking the face of the Lord. Let's go, girl. Yeah, that's what he's calling for. He wants to do something new, something different. But like, you know, there's a new move that's happening. There's a new yes. thing that he's doing. But are we willing to submit to it? And also being like, it's not about my title. It's not about my Come position. On. It's about being a servant under Jesus. Point blank, period. That's yes. where we're at. <laughs> that's exactly where we are. You know, our minds control so much. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And it is our hope that today you are thinking with the mind of Christ, that your mind is steady and centered in him, that those who trust in him will increase in peace. Today, our hope is that as you center your mind in Jesus, you will see the glory right where you are. And perhaps you will be filled with a greater cause to see eternal change in today's earth. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.